Here's a look at my AMT Peterbilt 352 cab over Pacific 66 Super B tanker setup. The tractor was a combination of scratch building and kit bashing with Ravel's 359 conventional and the Super B was a combination of a few shell 40 foot tanker kits from AMT as well the original tanker was a tandem unit with a 5 compartment uh, 40 foot tank unit um, mine have been accurately cut and scaled down to a 32 foot lead and a 28 foot pup with a tritum or triaxle bridge and a tandem for the pup. The tandem was basically straight out of the box. The tritum is a combination of two suspensions and while it looks like an updated set of trailers it's still running the spring suspension which is fine I didn't super detail anything or get into a whole bunch of extra money with aftermarket items such as airbags and whatnot for a airbag modern suspension the tractor has the 359 airbag suspension in the rear with the uh, frame and drivetrain and fuel tanks it's basically been spliced just behind the cab the front half of the frame is the 352 so it would take the cab and the battery box and the air cleaner and mount everything just as the 352 normally would one of the biggest changes I made to this kit though something I envisioned when I started planning it in my head was the engine conversion or engine swap as I like to call it which is the twin turbo Cummings twin turbo Cummins out of the 359 kit along with its radiator and some other goodies in there it's um, a lot nicer looking in my opinion than the old screaming Jimmy the V8 Detroit and instead of having the stacks and the air intake come through the stacks on the back of the cab and air intake basically through the middle of the cab um, by the sleeper I just changed everything to this rack system you see here which would be more in line with let's say a Kenworth and um, added the dual intake system which all the corresponding piping and plumbing was made up to fit everything as it should it's also sporting the steering axle from the 359 kit <clears throat> I've taken I don't think AMT ever offered a, a steerable or poseable steering um, front axle on any of their kits on any of their truck kits anyways and I've taken some of them and just cut them and ran a pin through them uh, which is what a lot of guys do but uh, I was using so much from the 359 kit that I decided to just go with the steering axle as well it took me about nine months to finish this from the beginning I planned it in my head for quite a lot longer than that though and I simply just did not cut the tanks down to a scale 28 and 32 foot length they were strategically cut about three quarters of the way up and of course I hit everything nicely the seams where they were spliced that was in order to get the correct compartment sizes as you can see the hatches on top uh, not equally 
the same distance between each other and the corresponding capacity letters or numbers pardon me um, <clears throat> they reflect what the what the 40 foot tanker would have had so all in all it was combined to just look right play the part I also moved the plumbing and valving system over to the driver's side on the uh, 40 foot tanker it stays on the passenger side and I like it on the driver's side better I think it's uh, better to have it there for visual purposes and in real life most of them are on the driver's side so whoever's operating the truck doesn't have to go all the way around to the other side the fenders were scratch built with a uh, brass sheet We've got a little bit of a bend on each end the brass was nice and easy to work with the chrome buds were added as well versus the spoke trailers or uh, spoked wheels and like I said a little bit of plumbing I mean the the air lines and the electrical cord they don't really go anywhere they go through the pogo stick and then into a little flange or plate I made and put on the frame they don't go anywhere though there's a little bit of plumbing on the engine but like I said it wasn't all about super detailing this kit it was just about making a super B which is super cool the Pacific 66 decals they were made for me by uh, Jerry over at modeltrucking.com I'm super happy to hear that uh, he's still in business or back in business he's made me a few decal sets over the years and he does an excellent job they're water slide they adhere really well and they're easy to work with and as far as the rest of the truck goes I just took my time to build it clean make sure the dimensions look good positioning of the suspension in the wheels was accurate there's no air brake plumbing there's no electrical plumbing there's no super detailing going on here but the model is exactly how I had hoped it to turn out when I started planning it and once I started to build it everything works really nice everything fit together good there was a lot of a lot of cutting and trimming and whatnot but it was the end result was worth it to me I'm going to attach some stills to the end of this video and I just want to say a shout out to Chris over at HPI Guys Model Workshop <clears throat> he's got an excellent channel on YouTube I don't know if you've never checked it out before please please do he, uh, he builds a lot of models every year he does two things that are very well in my opinion the first thing is that he lets people know that modeling is supposed to be fun it's not about making them perfect it's about having a good time creating something from nothing or from a kit with your hands and the other thing is he is doing a really good job in my opinion of keeping the hobby alive and getting some people either reinterested in it or new people interested in it so we can continue on with this great hobby of ours thanks for taking a look and I'm gonna try and post another few of my models